Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Sagittarius. The Sagittarius is your solar, lunar, ascendant, slash rising sign. Then this is a message for you. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's see. What do these cards have to say tonight? All right, Sagittarius. We've had this ongoing story about you kind of uh, standing up for yourself, not taking anybody's mess anymore. And kind of coming into a new era of your own power, which is wonderful, wonderful and difficult. <laughs> not something, not an easy task, I should say, not something to take lightly. Um, and I think, honestly, I know last week we talked about um, how I hoped that this week we would have some really, we'd pull a nice card, we'd have some really, um, you know, kind of uh, big leaps and bounds forward. Um, and I think that honestly, uh, just in the vibes I've been getting from your storyline, and this is really one of the f few signs that I read um, with some amount of continuity, um, they, they can be definitely standalone readings, but, um, the Sagittarius kind of arc that's happening is really kind of got me hooked in. Um, but I do, for the sake of transparency, I want to pull up this card and show you what I pulled tonight. And this is the Eight of Cups, okay? And you can kind of just tell... Um, by the colors, the sky, <laughs> it looks kind of, um, overcast with heavy, heavy clouds and, um, the flowers are kind of drooping over and looking a little past their prime. Okay. And so this is the card, um, that is related to in the Thoth deck, uh, to indolence. Okay, um, I forgot to look. Every time I get this card and I'm going to talk about it, I have to look up the actual definition of indolence and I totally forgot tonight. But um, what, what it does mean is um, kind of losing uh, faith in yourself, in your path. Um, things are getting a little murky. There's some amount of like self-denial, abandoning of... Um, any kind of uh, progress you've made to some degree, some suffering happening. Um, and now it's not as bleak in maybe other kind of um, like the uh, Rider Waite uh, deck. It's the, the meanings kind of are similar, but it's kind of more of, you know, leaving behind some of the old, um, like memories or things that were important before. Um, there's kind of an, a, like a sense of definite abandon, right? Of whatever was once important is now not so important. Or, um, there's just like the luster has been lost to some degree. And also, you know, this, in this, uh, iteration it this kind of talks about this being like a swamp and now let me just go ahead and tell you <laughs> I love the colors on this card so when I look at it I'm like oh yes this is <laughs> this is pretty and I they talk about the swamp well 
I hope in another life I was like a swamp witch or something. <laughs> so um, I love the thought of um, things coming to pass and decaying away, us losing that which does not serve our better purpose or ultimate purpose or the purpose that we are fixed on now, okay? Um, these cards, uh, these cards are not just like overtly happy and positive outcomes, right? But they are very necessary to the overall process of refinement of self, okay? There are going to be times when we question um, if we have made the right choice, if um, we are going down the right path, if what we believed before to be, um, you know, the right way to move forward or to part with things or whatever. If we always just stayed one-minded and married to that one, you know, that belief that we kind of picked up or um, created for ourselves, there's not a lot of room for um, growth and evolution, okay? So sometimes, yeah, it's, a, it's not a bad thing that we waver in the choices that we have made. Um, but I will say, and we will get to this... <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to this, I promise. Um, we have to also temper ourselves, okay? Try to anyways. Try to bring down those levels of emotionality, of, um, you know, grief or um, sorrow, lamenting the choices that we made, the stand we made for ourselves. okay? Um, I think that this week is going to be very much about, I want to look at this one here in a second. Um, it's going to be very much about kind of an interior back and forth, right? With yourself. Um, I think that, uh, and I'm seeing here, I want to, this is not exact. I, let me see where I will start right here. Um, I'm seeing this person next to a fire okay and it looks like a little person with their legs and their arms are up and there's a little fire kind of going and it looks like maybe there's some ashes and pieces you know smoke coming up and they're kind of um almost in a celebratory stance like they're dancing maybe dancing by themselves you know <laughs> that sounds like a wonderful evening just kind of having a fire by yourself and really um becoming so very enchanted by uh that beautiful the beautiful flames right um and feeling so uh you know in um uninhibited that you can just kind of be in the awe and glory of the moment of your release from this prior situation this prior configuration um and whatever that looks like i know we have talked about that you are a person that um often takes care of a lot of people or or a few people or maybe even one person um in especially your private life, but it could be also your line of work, right? And you give all of yourself to this work, to this caretaking, to making sure everybody else is doing fine. And sometimes it seems that you don't think about yourself and the people around you do not think about your well-being either. They don't ask you how you're doing. They don't go out of their way for you. They don't support you know make sure you're supported and I kind of gave an example of like you are the person that's kind of maybe taking care of your grandparents or your parents and you have these other family members who just kind of have come to a place where they expect you to be the one to kind of show up and you know do all the tedium and maybe some of the health stuff taking them to appointments taking care of the house this kind of thing and they you know, are kind of just there for the holidays or whatever, for the fun events, uh, the siblings or family members. And they don't really check in with you to see how you're doing. Although you're the one really taking care of, um, you know, the, the family that you all love, 
right? Um, so there's like a sense of burnout coming or has been for a while. And so um, I do think that you have recently kind of made it be known that you're not going to allow this to happen anymore. This is not going to be the um, circumstance of your life, right? And if this is kind of a career thing where you work in the medical field or you do some kind of work like social work or teacher or whatever it is where you're taking care of other people, um, coming to a point where you're really advocating for yourself. Now, I do think that there was this real sense of power rising up in you, um, really just that point where you, the breaking point where you weren't going to do this anymore you, and you spoke on it, you made some changes possibly and, um, and really felt like, you know, this is, everything's going to change now. And to some degree it has changed, but now that it has come to pass, uh, it's the part where you're kind of looking forward at, well, how, how are things going to look in my life? How, how am I going to set my life up now? What, excuse me, what am I willing to do? And, um, what am I absolutely not willing to do? Uh, I also think that, um, that there's been a bit of, and I see this kind of, this person kind of coming, it, they look like they're, um, kind of overshadowing this, this person here. This looks like a little person this one, and kind of face to face. Um, it looks like you're kind of locked in the stance with your family members or the people you work with or whatever it is. Um, and I think that they've, you know, been surprised at this big voice that's come in, come out of you, right? That you have really stood up for yourself. It's not necessarily in your kind of nature usually. Um, and to some some degree, I think that that's allowed people to take advantage of you, kind of. And um, so, I think that they're really kind of waiting for almost like the high of, um, you know, you really putting your foot down. Um, and you to kind of settle out in that energy and you know they're going to just kind of try to get things back to where they were slowly like you're just going to start to to slide backslide into the same position that you were in before and them taking advantage of you again right um now i think that you also are starting to feel kind of guilty because ultimately, I think whoever you probably take care of in your life, it's not necessarily that they're taking advantage of you. It's maybe the people around them, right? Um, so it's kind of like you feel terrible because you can't give as much of yourself to somebody who really probably, you know, needs the help, obviously, but you are going to run yourself into the ground giving so much of yourself and um, kind of just in this place where you're back and forth thinking, how can I manage doing a little bit more? Should I do a little bit more? You know, is anybody else going to pick up the slack? Um, who else is going to be willing to do these things, all the things that I do? And um, it's really it's hard to, um, not feel very guilty about that. And I'm, sh you know, I think it's just in the nature of people who are caretakers for sure. Um, now I see two things here. I have, I have this in the middle. We have the Cardinal, 
Okay, and here's the body, and here's the little tail kind of up here in the head. And for me, the cardinal, um, you know, I, it's not just me. I mean, this is kind of like, uh, I think, a symbolism that's pretty um, widespread is that when a cardinal comes to your yard, it's like somebody who has passed is thinking of you or visiting you or um, you know, this kind of thing. And I don't know that it's really necessarily somebody who's passed, but I feel that, um, you are being supported by parts of your family, ancestry, um, elders, whoever it is that really truly sees how much work you actually do, how much you have given of yourself. And I think that um, it could even be the person that you're taking care of. Maybe they're not cognitively there to um, communicate with you, especially if it's like, you know, somebody who is kind of going through those first stages of dementia or something like this. Um, but I do think that they are, they, you know, they want you to have the life that you want. They want you to have a good life. They want you to have a meaningful life. Um, and a life that you enjoy, right? And so I really think that this also comes as like really a bird of peace um, of, you know, just kind of like uh, great beauty, but kind of like real um, selective about sharing like their sweet song. I, I've always noticed that the cardinals are beautiful and they have a really pretty kind of little call that they make, but, um, they don't just give it up all the time. I mean, unless it's like, you know, mating season or whatever, but they don't just give it up all the time. And, um, I think that they're pretty selective about when they're going to do their little pretty, um, <laughs> They're pretty, pretty little songs and, um, you know, praises. And so I feel that, uh, this also like very much is a, a symbol of you and your spirit. So it's like kind of double, double duty here. Um, I think that you have a lot of like beautiful, uh, inner light, um, a lot of care for others. You're very intelligent, very perceptive. You're able to do a lot of things that most people would, it would take them a whole lifetime to figure out how to manage all the things that you're able to do and also just figure out how to do them. You just are a person that um, is so adaptable and um, you are also not like, uh, you, you're not very prideful. Let's just say that like I think it's when people get to know you um, and really witness like how um, skilled you are how intelligent and you know the great beauty that you are um, it is almost kind of enchanting to know somebody um, like you okay but I also think that people uh, you know definitely use your own, um, attributes as like a weapon against you. Um, maybe not, not even just a weapon, but something that they can, um, try to take from you or use you for. Okay. And because of your kind and sweet and generous nature, um, this can be, uh, kind of treacherous, right? Um, so I do think that, you know, you are being looked out for. And I think that this whole thing that's been going on, like I said, this arc of a story, um, I do believe that a lot of it's been instigated from um, kind of the unknown, right? Um, the other side or whatever you want to call it, your guardian angel, um, your ancestors, whoever is looking out for you, the universe um, trying to help you get things oriented in a way that is more beneficial for you. Okay. Now I wanted to look at this one and this one reminds me of 
kind of a female turkey, which is funny because also over here I see <laughs> <laughs> this one looks like a little dragon and in my mind um, wild turkeys and dragons could be the same creatures <laughs> because turkeys have um, they have a force behind them I would not mess with them they are um, once you get them going and they come charging at you you better watch out they will not stop um, if you've ever seen any, if you've ever witnessed them in your life, or if you've ever seen any videos of them, if you haven't, go look up like mean turkeys or whatever. <laughs> um, but I think that part of what is really going to help you not fall into this energy of the cup of eights, um, or cup of eights, the eight of cups, excuse me. Um, fall into this kind of energy of abandoning the progress you've made is by activating that that real fiery kind of um, I'm not putting up with this anymore energy again and reminding yourself even if you have to write it down make a freaking master list of like all of the things that came to pass that were just too painful for you where you felt um, disrespected where people did not listen or you know just all of those things and you go over that whenever you're starting to waver okay because you you deserve to have what you need now do i think that you there's room for you to adjust all of the things that you've decided on yeah of course um if you want to take some of that stuff back a little bit you know i would not judge that at all um everything is up for um tinkering with and and reconfiguring and getting it to work in a way that you are comfortable with okay um and i don't feel like you're the type of person that just fully abandons um somebody that you care about okay so um i think you know it's just uh it's a matter of getting it to where you feel like you um, can be happy at the end of the day, um, the amount of time and energy you are able to give and also keep some for yourself for sure. Okay. Let's see. And then I also see this one looks like a little, there's so many birds today. Um, this one looks like a little goose kind of it's eating it has its little head down right here and here's the body and the legs there um and i think that you know um with everything that has been going on i think it's so important and i probably said this in the other readings that you just have to really uh nurture yourself you know do things that feel of quality to you um if that is, you know, exercise, eating well, um, doing fun things, going out and having, um, you know, a special event or doing like a special hobby you like, a special interest or picking up things that you used to do that you don't have, you haven't had time for in the last years or whatever it is. Um, I think it's important to include all of those things in your life as much as you can so that you're not running on empty you need uh more than just food and sleep to fill you to f fill up your tank right and so i think just really um prioritizing doing things that make you feel seen heard uh at ease um just that are enjoyable things that are easy to do where you're not feeling anxious or self-conscious or you know they're almost unbearable i just don't know how i'm gonna get through this thing <laughs> um no do some things that you actually want to do not that you think you should want to do okay so let's see what else it looks like we have a little bit of love here so maybe there is some room for some love, a renewal of love, a new love, 
self-love, um, something, something, some kind of love is coming up. And it makes sense. We're in a nice time to be um, in a romantic mood. We're in the spring, in the northern hemisphere. We're in the cozy fall, in the southern hemisphere. And I think it's just, you know, that perfect time to eliminate some some of those things that just didn't support the life that you want and bring in some of the things that do. And I think all the different kinds of love are the perfect thing to dissolve that negativity. It, you know, it is the great equalizer. <laughs> So anyway, Sagittarius, that's the reading and I appreciate you so much. Um, I'm still getting over this thing with my throat, so I'm sorry. I forgot to get my other tea that I usually drink. I was trying not to get in a coughing fit there. Um, so I just want to thank you for your time and I'm always so honored to bring these messages to you. Uh, if you'd be so kind as to like the video, it helps me get into the algorithm. And uh, if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. Um, you can hit the little bell thing and it will let you know when the next videos come out. Other than that, please leave a comment. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what's going on. Um, let me know. I don't know. Tell me, tell me about that love that's happening. I'd love to hear about it. <laughs> Um, I always love it. I love a good love story, right? <laughs> I think we all do. So anyways, I appreciate you. Um, I can't wait to do the next reading. I think that they are getting better and better as far as this, the progression of this kind of arc that we have going. And um, next time, I really hope that we pick something like, I don't know, the Three of Cups or... Um, the lovers, or I don't know, the sun, maybe we, we could do with some sun here in the north. So, um, I would be happy if we got the sun card. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will talk to you again very soon.